Children are the future in this new series for Marvel Champions, which was uh, brought to us here by Shahara. And uh, so we are going to talk about Champions Change the World. Here, I'm Dan Rosen, and I'm here with uh, Shahara Ghaznabi and Matthew Ardle. And this is Detecting the Marvelous. How are you guys doing? Yeah, Good. How are you? <laughs> awesome. That was a great intro. Thank you cry. so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Champions. Um, yeah, this was this was yeah this was really cool. I'm looking forward to hearing yeah everyone's thoughts on this one. Uh, Thank it was, you. Yeah, it was a part of a ser- it's a series I hadn't I didn't know about sort of uh, yeah like a little section I I didn't know about the champions because it comes out of like civ- the second civil war which well we'll we'll get into all of that but yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize that there were two civil wars until I started getting more into comics. And my friends, there there are two civil wars, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. The first yeah. one, yeah, the first one is the Superhero Registration Act, which you kind of that's what the Marvel movies are based on, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. Cap versus Iron Man, much like the MCU. Yes. This one is. Have you read the Civil War? I have not, and I, I need to. Touch- I will touch I on, on it on my one. in my history. I'll I'll yeah. t- touch on the MC the Civil War two yeah. in the history section that I do. So I won't spoil that now. Because I remember like I read the first one because I, I was like it was a big event and I was really into it. And I also read like the there was like the Wolverine and Fantastic Four and a couple of the offshoots. But then when it came when they had a second one, I'm like a second Civil War. I'm still not over the first one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they arrested yeah. Cap and then like yeah. Well, more than arrested, they killed. Well, he Cap. got killed. Yeah. Well, they didn't yeah. kill him in the Civil War, but yeah, he ended up getting, dying right after. So. Wow. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, oh, he got shot at the in the last the panel trial. of the last yeah. episode. Yeah. 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 Or issue, but I I really just love it. I mean, I love the use of legacy characters, like the fact that it's a team of like young heroes, and I'm, I'll talk about this later. But it just I I love the energy that they bring, the optimism. Mm-hmm. Um, it really feels like there's a moment because I mean, if you look back historically when this was introduced, there was just a really big moment of activism amongst youth, and it okay. was it was good to sort of see that reflected um, in the comics. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I tend to like. And thank you for letting me be a part of this podcast. Period, because I, I find I find that the ones that I bring you guys are like a little yo- like younger, is in like they're kind of about like teenagers and about um like little activists like like these guys and um it's very interesting seeing the diversity in in the characters like we have like characters of color people from like different countries people who are queer it's i think it's a really great range and it kind of allows you to see yourself in if not all of these characters like just one of these characters at least um yeah Oh, I was gonna say, absolutely, I'm sure, and like it very much because uh, I think it really like captures your generation, which is gonna save the world, Shahara, from the mistakes that our generation did. Dear yeah. Lord, I uh, sure hope so. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and thank you for being a part of the show because, like, one of the reasons why I wanted to have somebody who's a bit younger and with a different perspective is because, like, you know, so many of the gatekeepers are boomers and Gen Xers, like myself. And, and you know millennials and 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 gen z are like you know it's a different perspective and like people say comics are for kids and yes they are but they're for kids in the same way that fairy tales are for kids in that they're they're moral stories that teach yeah. values like accountability responsibility honor kindness and like that's why whenever you know any of these big movie directors are like oh the superhero movies are garbage and like well they're only garbage if you make garbage yeah you know true like, you can tell a, a moral story that inspires people to be good using these genre tropes you know it's like you know 
you know, the Godfather isn't garbage because it's a mob movie. <laughs> you know, right. it's like it's just so. So, yeah. yeah. So thank you for bringing us these perspectives. I really appreciate it because like I've got blind spots because, you know, I'm into certain things. And it's like that's, I wanted to make sure we get all these different voices together to, to share our different different views on things. For sure. Like a couple of years ago, I knew nothing about Ms. Marvel, for example. And then yeah. I think during the pandemic, I watched like uh, like when I like lockdown, I watched some of the like they had like a Marvel and Friends like cartoon that had like Sheer, uh, like Shiri and um, Ms. Marvel and a couple others. And then uh, the TV show came out and then you've brought like, you know, a lot of Ms. Marvel stuff to uh, yeah, to my attention. Uh, and it's also yeah. like, it's like, cause that character alone was something where like the old guys who were running Marvel were like, oh, I don't know, like we have to do this like young Muslim superhero from New Jersey and then sold like hotcakes. like, oh, I guess there's a lot of people who want to see that character. Like you said, like when you get to see someone uh, reflect in the same way, like, you know, I like seeing the thing, you know, study for his bar mitzvah. Uh, I'm sure the same way, like seeing like, you know, young queer characters and seeing, uh, you know, Muslim characters and, you know, different people from different backgrounds is also very representative. Yeah. And then a completely just synthesoid, like Vision's daughter, who yeah. just has a very <laughs> direct way of speaking and has like a, f a funny sarcasm about her. But it's just because she's being completely real, which is very funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in many ways, like I, I, I'm being like a brown, like female person, I, I do relate so much to vivian vision as much as i do miss marvel um right. which oh, is cool. very very yeah. funny yeah i would i dressed up as vivian vision for for halloween this year like i painted myself completely pink oh awesome oh wow oh cool had a little green right. shirt for my dog because she has a little green dog named sparky um kind of like how they did <laughs> wandavision um but yeah it's it's a it's a really good cast of characters it, it, and i think that the the different things that like i'll recap um but the different beats that we hit, the different places that we go, um, mm. it feels like these are the characters to be able to to handle those and should be the ones to to speak on those. I think. Cool. So. Well, maybe. Are you ready for a little history lesson? I was gonna say that's a perfect segue. Let's do it. Sounds yeah, perfect. Awesome. Well, Champions was actually published in 1975 for the first time. Whoa. Um, yeah, so one cool. year after I was first published in 1974, it was it released <laughs> in October of 1975. Really? Um, now it was created by Tony Isabella and Don Heck, which sounds like a made-up name, but it, by gosh darn, mm -hmm. it is a real name. <laughs> um, Tony, an Ohio-born comic uh, or, a writer, uh, created and fell in love with the comics from the age of four. He wrote for Ghost Rider, Luke Cage, Daredevil, and Captain America. One of Tony's goals uh, was to be, uh, it was to introduce representation of heaven into comics and the Ghost Rider. Not an evangelical oh. perspective, but he's like saying, you know, there's so much representation of demonic forces. It was There's got to be a counterpoint. So he introduced a character called The Friend, uh, a kind of peacenik hippie. To Johnny Blaze, Ghost Rider, bef befriended and helped him fend off the forces of Satan. Um, he had originally written it so at the end of that issue, uh, that final issue of his running Ghost Rider, uh, Ghost Rider would become a Christian. Uh, he'd be freed from the forces of the of hell, but it wouldn't be like an evangelical thing. Like I said, it would be uh, just him living a good life. And that was just in the background and he'd still be a superhero. Um, unfortunately, a, a Marvel editor at the time was deeply offended uh, and like any good evangelical destroyed the art and rewrote it and put it out. Like, so, you know, you know, like, like most evangelicalism, you know, don't actually believe the word of God and Jesus to live a peaceful life, but force demons and everything and try to scare people. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that's my cynicism getting in, involved there. Uh, now, meanwhile, Don Heck, another Queens-born, Brooklyn-educated Marvel staffer, um, started at Harvey Comics, where he met Stan Lee before joining the twin, uh, one of the twin proto -pub Marvel publications, Atlas, where he became a staff art artist and uh, worked on 
comics, including the Avengers, Iron Man, and Ant-Man, right from the beginning. So he is like old school Marvel. Um, the first lineup of the champions was interesting. Um, Hercules. Uh, yes, the Hercules played by Brett Goldstein that I need to have happen. Yes. You can't tease Brett Goldstein as Hercules and not have it happen. Um, sure. So we also get hair alone. Yes. Yeah. Oh, geez, dude. Um, so that like I want a champions movie that incorporates the OG champions because that was it was Hercules, um, Johnny Blaze era Ghost Rider, Black Widow, Iceman and Angel. So wow. that is your original lineup. So Iceman and Angel, this would be right after they are freed from Krakoa by the the new all new X Men, the night Wolverine and Storm and all of them. Yeah. So they are sort of between uh, teams. They weren't really back in the X Men because that would have been way too many characters. Um, this by incarnation ran for two years as a bi monthly, um, and it actually hit a roadblock. Uh, and this is where my geek worlds collide. Uh, there was a tabletop RPG called Champions that came out in the 80s, and Marvel sued them. Oh, uh, Unfortunately for Marvel, they hadn't done anything in almost a decade because it ended in 1978, so they lost the rights to the Champions. Wow. They actually lost the ability to have a team called the Champions, which is why in, in 2007, when they tried to do a relaunch, they had to call them um, the order. They weren't oh. able to use the name the champions anymore. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. But by 2016, by the time oh. we get to this comic book series, uh, it, there was an amicable agreement and they, they were able to use um, the, the characters uh, in the all new story coming out of the wake of civil war two. Now, those the new champions were created by created by Mark Wade and Umberto Ramos. These are what the kind of people I find entirely exhausting would call uh, woke Gen Z teenagers. Uh, mm -hmm. This time composed of several legacy characters plus a time displaced X Men. So the lineup is Ms. Marvel, Kamala Khan, Nova, Sam Alexander, the totally awesome Hulk, Amadeus Cho. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and Viv Vision, plus a time-displaced Scott Summers, a.k.a. Cyclops. Um, the champions formed in the fallout of Civil War II, uh, this time pitting Tony Stark against Captain Marvel. Um, the, once again, Iron Man uh, causes the universe to get into trouble, uh, basically trying to minority report uh, the world because of a new inhuman oh. named Ulysses who has a precog power um but then he figures out it's probability based it's not 100% certain to happen but Ms. Marvel is like well th if the chances are somebody's going to do evil we lock them up before they do evil basically becoming um sorry not Ms. Marvel so Captain Marvel feels if the chances are somebody's going to do evil we should lock them up before they can do evil uh, creating a police state effectively. And this is what led to the, the dissolution of the Mar of the Avengers with Miles and Nova leaving. Um, and it's no wonder the kids weren't all right. Um, now, Mark Wade, a legend, an, a legend in the industry, um, Inkpot Award winner, uh, born in Hueytown, Alabama, got a start with Fantagraphics books, uh, Amazing Heroes. His first uh, big big title was Puzzle of the Purloined Fortress, a Superman short from Action 572. And uh, he would go on to work on so many stories it's hard to keep track, but he helped launch the Brave and the Bold reboot, the, the 52 reboot, and most importantly, he wrote Kingdom Come, one of the best comics uh, ever. Uh, he had a clear vision, and it's awesome. Um, let's put it this way. Comic gators hated him so much, they tried to sue him. Um, but when you have Neil Gaiman, Dan Slott, and Kurt Busiek on your side, yeah. you're not, you're not going to win. You're not he had his win. own Avengers Absolutely. team. He, he had his own Avengers, exactly. Um, 
artist Umberto Ramos, uh, another Ink Pot winner, is a Mexican artist who worked on Impulse, Runaways, and with Spider Man. Uh, he created his own series, Crimson. Uh, he started work at Kaboom Comics in 1989 before joining DC to work on Mark Wade's Flash spin off. Wade really seems to have a thing for young heroes, um, but uh, it well, and for that matter, also like America. hope because Kingdom Come is all about hope overcoming, right. not it's cynicism. Um, but yeah, so he wrote the or he did the art for Impulse. Uh, that's Barry's uh, Barry Allen's grandson. Uh, he would later co-found an image imprint. Uh, with uh, Joe Madera and J. Scott Campbell uh, within the Wildstorm image imprint to publish non-superhero comics. So you have two powerhouses creating this wonderful series out of the wake. Again, like a story born out of a sort of a nihilistic, cynical turn that comics took with Wade coming in to uh, give us some hope. Cool. So That's brilliant. shall we? Yeah. Thank you for giving me that. That I feel. I feel like I understand where we are coming into the comic, comics now, and um, we start with Miles and Nova already having left the Avengers. So that that all completely ties into like my my recap. Honestly, yeah. Perfect. Well, then, yeah. How about you take it away, Shahara? Yay. Okay. Cool. Um, so we start off in a big fight. This is probably from Civil War Two, I'm guessing, um, where the like the Avengers are fighting. Miss Marvel has her big and big in hand, and they save the they save the day. But everybody is kind of a little like a little like oh, okay. But do you really call yourself superheroes? Like what you did to our town, everything is destroyed, and it makes Miss Marvel just question what the Avengers really does and leaves um going to miles and nova who have left already and telling them that i've quit the avengers um and they recognize that they can do a lot just with their own powers and start to kind of create their own team so they reach out to amadeus cho who is um like a kid hulk he is the hulk but he's kind of like a young version Mm. of the hulk um so hulk is dead at this point he was killed in civil war oh is that true yeah, well, Hawkeye I murdered him. him. Oh dear lord! I should... Hawkeye. How Maybe we should crazy. read Civil War Two, and then it'll be like the prequel. Like we'll understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It very much sets up the champions. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Bruce Banner is dead, unfortunately, and then we have Amadeus Cho. Um, we meet Vivian Vision. Um, and Vivian Vision is this like super computer who has like access to like the internet, just like in a snap of a second, and um, all security cams in the world, and um. They're like, okay, well, we have a team. What's like the closest nearby um issue right now? And they uh see this uh this shipyard in Baltimore, uh, where there are these uh, uh, like trigger warning, but there is um somebody getting like there is a group of young women being human trafficked, and yeah. they go to Baltimore. They beat this human trafficker, um, and they realize that they have this ability to to come together they kind of go viral hashtag champions um and they sort of become this phenomenon and they want to help out at in different places in the world so they um they go to the middle east they go to daly county um and then they end up going into the middle of the ocean and getting trapped by atlanteans um and escaping uh in there, of course, there's uh, this really awesome forest scene where it's like, okay, everyone, show up, like each other your powers, and mm-hmm. that's a really fun thing where we just get a, a montage of like, okay, well, I'm I'm Miss Marvel, I have the ability to unbegin, okay, I'm Miles, and I have the ability to turn invisible, like like that kind of thing, and everyone's showing off their powers, and that's something that I really like in an origin story comic. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's those are just the main points of this of this story. Um, there, so yeah. Yeah. Hey everyone, 
it's me, Matt. Uh, I just wanted to touch base with you. Last week I mentioned that I was starting on the Magic Mind journey. Uh, it's helped a lot with my energy levels, my attention. It's been pretty wild. It's a combination of a whole bunch of different herbs and mushrooms and all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, it's it's been pretty neat. I, I actually have noticed that there is a downtick in my need to drink uh, caffeinated sodas because I have a huge soda addiction. Um, but, you know, it, it's got a nice, like, citrusy taste, very almost like a punchy kind of berry meets citrus vibe. It's fresh, it's uh, re refreshing, and uh, you know, it's been pretty good. Check out Magic Mind. You can find their website, magicmind.com. Uh, but I'll let you know how the journey continues. And now, back to Detecting the Marvelous. Sneeze. Sorry about that. I didn't want to blow up your ears. Um, I think that was the most silent dad sneeze I've, I, I, I've I ever like, heard. Matt's either got something really insightful to say or he's about to sneeze. <laughs> yeah, it was the latter. It was the latter. Yeah, was like, um, yeah. So why did you choose this comic? What what inspired you to, to share this with us? That's a good question. I uh, Well, number one, I'm such a big fan of the champions. I know that like in the young young superheroes kind of thing we always hear about the young avengers and i started reading like america chavez and um other young young avengers issues uh then i was like where i i i learned about vivian vision um in doing my own research about like the same way that i did with emily bright when we looked at strange academy i was like okay, okay what are my age that i can relate to um and i saw that there's an issue created by tom king um, of the visions where it's like vision living the suburban life um mm. but also cr having cr almost like in wandavision um the vi like vision creates this weird messed up dead family um that consists of uh viv his and i cannot remember any of their names because they're all very similar there's like viv vin and his wife but it's not wanda it's this synthetic wife as well um and so that's where that's how I was introduced to Vivian. That story goes so dark. So dark. Well, it's Tom King. Like I'm really yeah, not surprised. It's, it's like straight up horror comic, basically. Have you have you read the the visions? Like have you read like, Yeah, the, yeah. Wow. It it's it is messed up. Like yeah, I have she's to she's a character with a lot of trauma. Yeah. Um, which we see in this in this issue. Um yeah. I have mixed like uh, parts of myself. Like I've read a few of the issues in the visions, and I wonder if it's if it's too dark just for the sake of being like shock value almost. Mm. I, no, but I, I mean, haven't read the whole it, thing, so I, yeah. I could be totally wrong about that. I, it, 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 it's I think it's an exploration of humanity and mm -hmm. and the the boundaries and and dra trauma. So I think it's done well. It's done well. It, okay. I mean, it's horror in a sense, but it's horror in a good way, not a gratuitous way. Okay, good. Then I, I'll actually read the the rest of it. I, I read one one issue, and I was like, this feels a little racist, and I don't know if it's like, but I don't know, maybe yeah. it just. Oh, fair enough. I don't know. Well, but I'm, I, I'm... It, it's supposed to be capturing the pain of the visions and the the xenophobia towards them from humans. Yeah. So yeah. That makes and, totally I mean, cool. it's interesting just to then like uh, use that to transition back to champions is that champions, it's not for like how like the tone and the optimism is so bright, but it is also very dark because like you said, they deal with like a lot of like trigger warning stuff like human trafficking, uh, oppression of women. Um, and I can't remember if Malala gets mentioned, I believe. She does. Yeah, she does. Right, so, like Malala Yousafzai gets mentioned. Um, 
and there's anti-semitism uh, anti-semitism and racism homophobia and racism in the county like they really in the first five issues like basically go off all the like like a lot of the key like hot button issues in the modern time without it feeling like they're like all right we're checking off a list here and not in a way and it i think it really addresses a couple of things that sometimes i have an issue with like with comic book superhero stuff is that one you can't just punch evil into submission um yeah. you have to like you have to fight hate with love and you have to like which i think is like as cheesy as that might sound i think it's a very good uh very important message uh because they just show like they can't just be like oh we're gonna expose this daily county sheriff and then everything's gonna be fine and it's like well hold on it's not as simple as that um yes we're gonna keep fighting but it's yeah i know you can't just do it that way um, and I mean, it, it felt like it was very much inspired by the spirit of like Greta Thunberg uh, yeah. and you know Malala, like the, their like that generation's like late millennials, early Gen Z, that generation's drive to change the world. You know, coming out of like I'm a Gen Xer, and two you know, letters I, before uh, Gen Z. <laughs> yeah, two letters before Gen Z. Um, <laughs> And, and, you know, as a lot of my peers kind of trash talk subsequent generations, uh, but I mean, we just basically flew under the radar as far as the generation is concerned, because we're such a small cohort. We're just like, we'll keep our heads down. We'll make sure boomers printers work and they'll leave us alone. <laughs> and, and that's what we did. Like so many of us are in tech and, and, and all of these jobs because, you know, we were kind of like yuppies. We sold out. You know, but we, instead of, you know, doing a lot of coke in the in the 80s, we did a lot of heroin in the 90s and then, you know, just took corporate jobs. Yeah. I did for the record, mom, I did not do heroin. I did <laughs> I not did do heroin at any point. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot comment at this time, but I did not do heroin. Um, but yeah, like and, and, and that's, I think, the interaction there. Um, that's going on with like you know the comics that came out of our generation are like Spawn and Bloodspot and all these like dark cynical characters, but if you also look at the age group, so like Sam and Thor uh, in the Avengers would be my age, which mm -hmm. are kind of corporate shills at this point just like oh we've right. got to leave it to the unions to fix this up and yeah. well, we can't deal with this or we can't deal with that and you know, I'm not saying they're entirely wrong, but it's also not entirely right. You know, yeah, it's like it is, it is. I feel like shirking a little bit of responsibility for like what happened. And it brings up like an, where I'm like, and I mean, especially this is the whole thing with like Man of Steel, the movie where then like Superman, like just totals Metropolis while yeah. like stopping General Assad. Like, I often think of there's a Futurama episode where they get uh, superpowers and it's like, oh, you saved our three million dollar gem general and caused only two point nine million dollars of damage. A net gain for the city. Like, and it's kind <laughs> of like what happens like, with some superhero stuff. So I really loved it was like it really was addressing those issues of like, all right, you can't just like throw you know, have these superhero fights where you just, like, throw the bad guys into buildings and crush them and, like, you know, crush the infrastructure around you. Uh, and at the same time, also saying that, like, sometimes you can't just use your, like, superpower, like, fists to pummel when, like, Gwenpool shows up, you know, who just yeah. wants to fight, fight, fight. Uh, yeah. Which is, you know, like, a, and it's a great uh, perspective. And it's one of the things that I love about Ms. Marvel's character is just she is so like unrelentingly optimistic and driven towards making the world better, but just not in a punchy, punchy sort of way. Yeah. And, and you said there's. Sorry, go ahead. No, actually, you go ahead. I'm interested in what you're going to say. I was just going to say, and that one of the things too is it's not all preachy social justice stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. as much as I, I'm a hardcore yeah. social justice dude. Um, it's not just about social justice. There's also like a big component that's about these relationships, like Sam and Miles is really like just the energy of those two bouncing off one another, especially like in the ca camping trip where they just become 
such teenage boys at one point when Viv oh, yeah. and and Hulk are kissing because Viv reveals that she's never kissed and she says like meh maybe it's the wrong gender and then they both look at look at yeah. Kamala and, and she's like nope shut up you two yeah, yeah. and they're just they have like these tiny little squinty eyes and like oh and it's like yeah boys suck even decent boys suck <laughs> yeah. sometimes um, in later issues of um of I believe it's a champions but we do end up uh discovering the relationship between Vivian Vision and Riri Williams who is um no. Ironheart and um they end up like it's it's interesting I'm hoping I'm wondering how they're going to do it in the MCU if they do tackle it but Mm-hmm. Um, Vivian Vision does identify as a lesbian character, which is mm. freaking fantastic and one reason why I really, really relate to her. Um, it's interesting because she's also just a cyborg and is also like the coolest, like, you know, synthetic superhero of all time, but um other than yeah. Vision, of course. But um I think in those issues, it's like Vivian knows that she's a lesbian because Vivian is like very like she knows herself, she knows what she knows, and Riri's a human who's trying to come to terms with what that means for herself and it's it's a very interesting it's very interesting that relationship that we can always discover in another episode of this show but um (laughs) yeah that's interesting and And also what uh you guys said before i'm saying two things and my apologies for that um but yeah like when they were in um when they were in um oh my god when they were in oh the middle east when they're in the middle east and they were like they wanted it's a pretend to live- country so that's an okay to, it's yeah. understandable not to, it's not a real country that they were yeah. in so absolutely yeah. they, they were they wanted to like like they were like okay well how do we help like okay we could just like get rid of all these guys and whatever and they were like no we don't want like americans to fight our problems for us and also it's it doesn't help us that we're like the, the damsels in distress we need to be kind of the forefront mm. of creating our own change and then the, at yeah. the end like she like you know miss marvel paints c's on all of their shirts because you know, if you fight to change the world, you are a champion, whether you have powers yeah. or not, which is very, very beautiful, yeah. I found. It, sh- it showed, like, a, yeah, because I really liked that, and I thought that was really touching, and also a much clever way of approaching it, because, again, it's not just the superheroes coming in to save the day, but it's also, like, it's almost like it's, like, very good foreign policy advice, like, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like U.S. and other kind, con- like you know, Western countries take note from this comic book issue, like going in and empower the locals so that they can, you know, fight their battles against oppression. Um, and so I thought that was really great. And to tie that into one, it's only like one or two panels, but there's a bit on the camping trip when Ms. Marvel uh, is Kamala is talking to uh, Scott about her being inhuman and him being a mutant it's like oh mm-hmm. like we're told we're supposed to hate each other but like i don't feel that now and see like a reason for it and like me growing up in mississauga where like i had a friend who's palestinian in high school and you know it was just sort of like we liked the same stuff and we had the same interests and like it like that like jewish palestinian just didn't even factor into our heads growing up and like didn't even really learn about cultural conflicts as much until later on kind of thing and one of the things i like about this too is is self-aware of the social justice issue like it's not just like like so on the camping trip when kamala suggests ghost stories and viv is like was that a microaggression it, it, it's clear so <laughs> she says she has no emotions she says she has no feelings that's totally a lie she shut yeah, down yeah. a bunch of that when her, her mother and brother died mm-hmm. um like right. but it's still there and she was totally fucking with kamala there like that was totally yeah, yeah. her just messing with her uh and but that's also the writers acknowledging that component to make the readers comfortable with this is not going to all be preachy. Um, I loved it. Like this is another mm, one where you've shown cool. it to me and I'm just, I'm going to be reading and reading like uh, to the point where I got to issue seven and wow. I was like, Oh no, uh, which I won't give away for Dan who may not have got there yet. Yeah, yeah, but, no, no, but, definitely uh, no, but I'm like, Uh Oh, what's going to happen now? I hated issue six. I hated mm. and I didn't hate it. It's, 
two things I, I did. I hate Gwenpool, but now in talking about it, I realize I think that was weighed because Kingdom Come is a commentary on the nihilistic comics that came out of my generation, mm-hmm. the dark anti-hero driven comics. Um, I think, and when this came out, this is when Spider Gwen, Gwenpool and Deadpool were getting jammed into everything. And I think this is his commentary on that with a lighter touch. Um, because you, you see like Kamala's entire reaction is good flipping Lord. What am I going to do with this person to the point yeah. where she does like, like this epic face palm. Yeah. At the end. <laughs> I remember that. Um, yeah. And it is. It, and I think that was him as a writer saying, they made me put Gwenpool in here. <laughs> I hate it. There's no reason, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. And, and it was like, she was an idiot who was constantly causing trouble and mm. didn't make things any better. And they got through it anyways. And I think that was almost a kind of a meta commentary. Um, but what bummed me out is at the end of that issue, we didn't get to see what happened. Like, I, I mean, mm. and we don't yeah, get easy resolution, right. but yeah, but yeah, we don't get easy resolution and that's a reality because like, these police procedurals like law and order where we see everything tied up in a nice little bow at the end. That's not real, real life. But I really would have liked to seen what happened to that shitty sheriff. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, uh, hopefully knock on wood, like down the line or something like that. But I think it is giving you the tough answer. It's almost like what would happen, like, you know, some more out of the wire than out of law and order or, you know, one of those more realistic so it does give you a bit more of a like reality check yeah yeah and i'm hoping as it goes on we get longer stories because the next one was part of a big crossover event it was basically this monster island kaiju event like issue six was all about like these giant monsters um and that was just a marvel event that seemed to slam the brakes on it but they were still able to introduce i think that basically the anti-champions at that mm. point right mm. and it, yeah so but i just like every oh, character i love yeah i, I love That's everything true. like you got like amadeus is like a bro like a tech bro you know like he's got this yeah. like bro energy and it's like he's, he's like he wears axe body spray you know he wears axe totally body spray does. like yeah he's like eight... i know how to do this i'm being strong yeah for sure <laughs> yeah. Because he's the eighth smartest kid on the planet, or person he's on the smartest planet. human on the pl- or sixth smartest human on the planet. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it doesn't mean that he's like a nerd. Like he he lives in the fact that he can like also punch stuff and beat shit up and yeah. yeah. He's got he's got very like you lift bro kind of energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean like they they take time to introduce like Riri, uh, the Falcon's replacement Falcon, um, Moon Girl and devil dinosaur mm-hmm. at the end of the one of issue one uh so it's like it's showing that there's a f- it's uh, this is one of the reasons why i wanted shahara to be on the show yeah um, there's there's a future that is not mine you know like everybody is so especially like gen xers and boomers and like early millennials are very much this isn't my childhood this isn't real but shit changes, you know, like yeah. the world changes and we need to let younger people show us the way, you For know, sure. like, and and I think this is an awesome showing of the way, you know? Yeah. Thank you for saying that, Matt. Thank you. It did. It reminded me a bit of um, like a sort of the one superhero ish thing that like, uh, pe- like people uh, from your generation, Shara, did was when Donald Trump was throwing this big rally and like through TikTok, then like all these like, you know, yes. Gen Zers like bought up tickets and got all the tickets. So then he had just like <laughs> such a dismal rally and they showed like a video of him afterwards just looking so like dejected when he like with his tie untied, his color undone when he thought like the cameras weren't on him. And it was one of those things where it was like, well, you know what? It's like the new generation. They know they have their ways of, like, you know, like how to like raise awareness or fight without fists and without, you know, trying to be macho and like using their brains and coming together. So, yeah, yeah like it's uh, I think between like this and Strange Academy, it really is like 
show it's great to see these like young superheroes that are reflecting uh like a new generation that's gonna you know push the world in the next you know in the next step so thank you for saying cool. that yeah. yeah i think it reminds young people of their power in in a society that doesn't like to give them power and it, it really is nice to see yeah that's i think that's the perfect way to put it yeah save i think us, in the next Shahara, save us <laughs> we stuff. wasted all our time do, doing drugs yeah. and partying in the 90s so it's up to you to clean up our mess i'm yeah. like i don't even know where to find heroin so honestly i'll be <laughs> yeah, perfect oh my god you're already so on the even, right track <laughs> in the yeah. next like few issues like, issues volumes of this like we go get into like champions outlawed when they start outlawing teenage superheroes because they think oh. that they're they're like they're too um destructive or i think it's it's something where vivian vision like malfunctioned and they were like oh teenage superheroes are bad and then there's a whole thing about that and that's something that we can totally get into in the future um oh, I was yeah. between that, that one and this one i'm glad that i chose this one just to start um mm. but it's it's so interesting see following the young people in in the superhero realm and in, in the comics it's really cool absolutely yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I hope they bring to the MCU because I mean they can't. I feel like they're setting uh, it up. Like they for are, sure. but I, we got Miss Marvel. We got um, yeah. Kate. Um, Kate is uh, Kate a like, Hawkeye. Kate Bishop. Yeah. She's yeah. she's a young Avenger. So we got like we got a good like a fair mix. Uh, there's talks yeah. of a Marvel quest that might have Vivian Vision. We don't like. I don't know. Is it yeah. Well, there? there's going to be a new new. There was supposed to be a Vision TV show. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they would have been doing the visions with that. That would have been the natural spinoff right. with the white vi uh, white vision yes. reclaiming his humanity. Yeah. Um, but like the thing that worries me is with all of the, the flux, we might not get that opportunity because there's mm. a lot has changed in yeah. the MCU mm -hmm. because they realized they greenlit way too many projects. They better um, not cancel Strange Academy. I really want that Strange Academy it's show. It's gotta happen. That one, yeah. like, we it will seems fight. Like such a like easy win too. Like it's a, it's perfectly set up for a TV show. Like yeah, but I mean, I'm just afraid that they're gonna reboot the universe before we get a chance. And yeah. I feel like they're even kind of setting that up to start in Deadpool. Right. Because, yeah. So I mean, there's all of these stories that I would love to see because it there's the fact it's been like 10, 12 years now since we've had the first Marvel movie. Um, these actors are getting older. Enough time has passed in universe to let a new generation rise. And I'm afraid we're going to just reset and lose all of that. Yeah. Which bums yeah. me out because I'd love to see the champions on screen. Me too. Well, maybe they'll be part of the new. Cause Kamala, I mean, Kamala is a mutant in the new, in uh, the MCU. So perhaps. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, I think you know, that was a great conversation. Anything anybody wants to share about the comic before we wrap things up? No, if it's I not love gonna be it, TV I'm, show, I... we can write it. Pardon? We can um we, we can write the TV show if Marvel. Yeah. Will hey, hey, yes. hey, Marvel! If you hear us, we we'll have a packet to your on your desk by the end of the week. That's right. We've got and Shahara, the voice of the generation. She's going to be leading, leading the way. She she's our showrunner. Yeah. We're just we're just there to like at the right. I'm going to bring her coffee. I'm going to be the PA. <laughs> so ready, so so ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, you've been listening to Detecting the Marvelous. Thank you. You've been listening to Detecting the Marvelous, a Far From Here and showbizmonkeys.com co-production. Their producers are Dan Rosen, Matt Ardill, and Shahara Ghaznabi. Music by Glenn Bouchamp, and art by Ben Steamroller. Thanks for listening, and remember, true believers, Excelsior! <laughs> <laughs>